and in the stillness, he began to hum. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory. Luca shivering in the raw snow. He began to hum it out loud. The incomparable loss they shared together. She let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. for forgiveness. slumped into the cold, wet snow. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. Luca gazed down at Nuncrete with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Chapter 9 the devil you know. Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. 
She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Kerr gave a bow of deference. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. 
His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. A hushed horror gripped the crowd. This is a story about change. <laughs> Sharper examined his new hands. Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. <laughs> Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Ha <laughs> ha 
Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Icky begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We, we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. This was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. Like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. Luca twisted free of Nuncrete's grasp.
two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Luca placed a sinker on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Luca wrapped a twig of thyme around the hook. Some fish have refined taste. aired a long holler into the woods. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been 
and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is... is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. <laughs> Chapter 5 Dangers Big and Small Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. <laughs> the large figure cocked its head inquisitively. <laughs> Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. <laughs> Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. His hands shot up to his face. Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca.
She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Beck's eyes narrowed. After a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair.
Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. started to wiggle with excitement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 